Well, good evening, everyone. I am your favorite lieutenant at the Owasso Citadel. My name is Lieutenant Justin, and I'd like to welcome you to our dinner church today, our dinner church live stream. Welcome, welcome, welcome. I miss you guys so much. Oh my goodness, I miss you guys. And I would just love to be seeing you guys right now, but God is good. God is still on the throne. And I have a very, uh, just a, a powerful message from God today for us. So I just hope that you'll hear clearly from the Lord right now, and I pray that he would speak, and that I would not be heard from, but that God would be heard from. D.L. Moody, he, he, he made a deal with God. He, he, was a, he was a famous evangelist, a famous preacher, and he made a deal with God that he would witness for Christ to at least one person each day. One night, about 10 o'clock at night, he realized that he had not yet witnessed. So he ran out into the street, and, he, and he's looking for somebody. He found a man standing by a lamppost, and he walked up to him, and he, he asked him, Are you a Christian? The man flew into a violent rage and threatened to knock Moody into the gutter. Later, that same man went to an elder in the church and complained that Moody was doing more harm in Chicago than 10 men were doing good. The elder begged Moody, and he met with Moody, and he begged him to temper his zeal with knowledge. Uh, three months later, Moody was awakened at the YMCA by a man knocking at the door. It was the man he had witnessed to. He said, I want to talk to you about my soul, he said to Moody. He apologized for the way he had treated Moody and said that he had no peace ever since the night on Lake Street when Moody witnessed to him. Moody led the man to Christ, and he became a zealous worker in the Sunday school. And that's a quote from Warren Wearsby. But isn't that a powerful story, you guys? The, I, I think the moral of that story is that it's, it's our job to share the gospel. It's, it's your job. It's my job. And uh, it, it's amazing. We don't need to temper our zeal, okay? I, that story makes me mad because of the elder. Who, who goes and complains to Moody for sharing the gospel. And some, sometimes you see Christians like this, they will see you preaching or teaching in a way that they don't personally agree with, and they will call you out and say, you shouldn't do it that way, brother. That makes me so frustrated because the world needs Jesus. The whole world needs Jesus, you guys. Every single person needs Jesus. And, and we've got to share that. And there are all sorts of different ways to do that whether it's sharing with your friends, whether it's being a good example, whether it's uh, witnessing to your neighbor, whether it's um, gathering at a church and inviting people, whether it's doing street evangelism, uh, evangelism, whether it's working with the homeless, there are many different ways to do it. So don't ever attack someone for what they're doing. We need people out there sharing the gospel in unique ways. So last week, you guys, we, we were considering the various the various evidences for the resurrection of Jesus Christ. We were looking at the historical evidence, the scientific evidence, the archaeological evidence, and of course, looking at the empirical fact of the, the, the massive expansion of the church after Jesus. So now we consider the last moments that Jesus spent face to face with his remaining 11 disciples. These are Jesus's last moments on earth. So as we know, Jesus died on the cross and he remained dead for three days before rising from the dead and appearing to his disciples and also various people throughout Jerusalem. Actually, the female followers of Jesus encountered Jesus at the tomb first. Then later, Jesus appeared to the men as well. And they didn't really understand why they were seeing Jesus after he had died. They thought they were seeing a ghost. They, they thought, you know, he was, a, you know, like a force go, go ghost from Star Wars, like Obi-Wan Kenobi and uh, Qui-Gon Jinn and Anakin Skywalker at the end of uh, The Return of the Jedi standing there like ghost. But Jesus wasn't a ghost. He was not a force ghost. He was really alive. So we see in our scripture today, and it's from Luke chapter 24, it says this. Jesus helped his followers to understand these scriptures about him. And Jesus said to them, It is written that the Messiah would be killed and rise from death on the third day. You saw these things happen. You are witnesses. You are witnesses. Isn't that powerful, you guys? You guys are witnesses. 
The original disciples were witnesses of Jesus. And guess what? Today, we are witnesses of Jesus, you guys. We are the ones who have seen Jesus active in our lives. We are the ones who have seen what he has done. We are the ones who have been amazed by how, how he saved us from sin and darkness and evil. But we're just amazed by what he has done in our lives. So we are the witnesses now. We're the witnesses. And isn't that powerful that he calls his original disciples witnesses? He says, you guys were there. Think about a court of law. What, if, what, what, what do you do in a situation where, where you have uh, you know, a couple and the guy says that this and the girl says this? You don't know who to believe. What do you do? You look for a witness, a third party who saw what happened and who can testify about what really happened in that situation. And then you're able to say, all right, I understand now. And Jesus Christ appeared to his disciples after his death because Jesus would want witnesses to share that message, okay? It's, it's, it's really uh, quite amazing um, that Jesus calls us his witnesses. That's a word that's used over and over, witness. You have witnessed what Jesus has done. And the, though I haven't seen Jesus face to face, I've never looked into his eyes. I've seen him set me free from sin. I've seen him break the shackles of addiction in my life. So I am a witness of what Jesus is doing 2,000 years later, you guys, in the year 2020, what Jesus is still doing in the world for people, for millions and billions of people. You guys, it's amazing. It's amazing. So, uh, the script says, you, you must of Jesus, you must go and tell people that they must change and turn to God, which will bring them his forgiveness. This is the ED, this is the easy readers version, the ERV. It's just very clear and blunt. That's why I use it some, sometimes. It says, you must tell people that they must change and turn to God, which will bring them his forgiveness. You must start from Jerusalem. That's where they were starting at, Jerusalem, and tell this message in my name to the people of all nations. Remember that I will send you the one my father promised. That's the Holy Spirit he's referring to. He said, then stay in the city until you are given that power from heaven. Now, the theologians, people who study the Bible for a living, call this the Great Commission. The Great Commission. The word commission means a command, an order, a, a calling where you're also given authority. Go do this. Go do this. This is our final order by our king, our commanding officer, Jesus. He says, go and tell this message to the world. And, it, 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 and they started with one country. They were in Israel, in, in the capital, Jerusalem. That's one country out of a lot of countries. And he said, you need to preach this message to all countries, all nations in the world. Now think about it. Today in 2020, there are 193 countries in the world. And guess what? There are churches in every single country in the world, as far as I can tell. I mean, there, there's even churches in, in countries like China and North Korea where it's virtually illegal to be a Christian there. I mean, there are churches everywhere. everywhere. There are billions of Christians in the world today. So we, <laughs> the church is fulfilling that mission. Today, this great commission, this final order of Jesus is now yours to fulfill. It's 2020, you, you guys. And I want to tell you guys this. This is really important, so listen up. It is not my job as your pastor to fulfill this command. I'm part of that. I'm along with you guys fighting for it and working for it. But it's all of our jobs. Every single Christian, it is our job to, to carry the message of Jesus out there into the world. Okay? It is not just the minister's job. We, we have to remember that. Sometimes the attitude is, well, I go to church, I, I listen at church, I, I read my Bible and pray, and, the, and I cheer on the pastor while he, he shares the gospel. No, wrong, wrong, wrong. That, that is not correct. We are all fighting together. We are all a fighting force. How many people can, can I share the gospel with alone? maybe a handful, maybe 20, maybe 50. But if we're all working, all, all, all of us together, all sharing the gospel with, with the world around us, imagine how many people we will turn to Jesus. Isn't that amazing, you guys? We are an army of God. We are an army of God. 
we, we've got to win the world for Jesus. That was Jesus's great commandment. And, and he says, proclaim to the people that they must change their ways. They must turn from their sins and turn to Jesus for forgiveness of their sins. That is the only way to heaven, you guys. Think about how serious that is, you guys. That is a very, very serious uh, responsibility that we have. There is only one way to heaven, you guys, and that's through Jesus Christ. Think about that. Think about how many people need to hear that message. Every single person who's ever been born needs to f find Jesus before it's too late. That, that is such a great responsibility. That's why I am always trying to run my mouth about Jesus and I get myself into trouble sometimes, but that's all right. You know, I, I'm, I, I try to utilize social media, email, uh, videos, blogging, um, just, uh, I, I, I put up yard signs and I leave them in my yard all year round, you know? I try to do anything I can to share the gospel. And I'm not saying I do it perfectly, guys. I, I, I need to push myself to uh, be sharing the gospel more actively in person with people, one-on-one, -on -one, because sometimes I get a little bashful about that, and I'm sure you do too. But you guys have power. Re remember that. Have faith before you share the word, because there's great power in you to share that word. And it can be a stranger. It, it can be a friend. It can be a family member. And it may not go well, but that's all right. Keep trying. K keep working at it. This is, a, this is a powerful, a very important and vital message that we have to share. So our scripture today continues like this. Jesus led his followers out of Jerusalem to the mountain, to this mountain. The, I, we, 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 we believe they're referring to the Mount of Olives, this, this, this high rise over Jerusalem. And Jesus raised his hands and he blessed his followers. And while he was blessing them, he was separated from them and he was carried into heaven. And they worshiped him there, and they went back to Jerusalem very happy. And it says they stayed at the temple all the time praising God. That's from Luke chapter 24. Isn't that amazing? T today we're talking about the ascension of Jesus. So we know that Jesus was born, right? We celebrate that on Christmas. Jesus died. We celebrate that on Good Friday. And Jesus resurrected from the dead by the power of God. We celebrate that on Easter. And today, I think it's fitting after Easter that we remember and recollect the ascension of Jesus. The fact that Jesus was raised from the ground and taken into heaven by God. And that's where Jesus is right now. That's why I'm always telling you guys, Jesus is alive and well in heaven. He is alive. He has a body. He is alive. He's a king over all of us, and he is in heaven. That's where he physically is. Obviously, he's, he's active right now. He's in this room right now. He's, he's ministering through me right now. He's, he's with you in your home right now as you listen. Because he's God, he can be everywhere at once. But physically, Jesus is in heaven. He rose, and he ascended. And the Bible says that he is coming again the same way that he left. Isn't that interesting? So that's where Jesus is right now in this other reality that the Bible refers to as heaven, this, this parallel dimension. I don't know what you want to call it, this, this other reality that we can't see, this, this heavenly realm, this other world is where Jesus is ruling and reigning. And the whole idea is that Jesus is coming again. He ascended, but he will come again to rule and reign on the earth. And Jesus gave the mission to us to be witnesses while he is away, okay? He is with us right now, though. But he is physically in heaven, yet he is with us. Isn't that uh, interesting? God is very mysterious. You know, he's, he can be different places at once. It's just, it's just amazing when you think about it, just how I infinite our God is. So, um. Let's, let's just look at this from another angle, okay? From the, the Gospel of Matthew, we've, we've been looking at Luke. Let's look at the Great Commission and the Ascension that is recorded in Matthew. So it says the 11 disciples traveled to Galilee, to the mountain where Jesus had directed them. When they saw him, they worshiped, but some doubted. That's referring to Thomas because he was a doubter, obviously. And then it says, Jesus came near and said to them, I love this, all authority has been given to me in heaven and on earth. Why? Because of his victory on the cross, okay? He says, he gives his command then, go therefore and make disciples of all nations, all nations, 
and teaching them to observe everything I have commanded you. And remember, I am with you always to the end of the age. And that's what I want to refer you to, that last line. He says, I am with you always to the end of the age. And, and uh, m- many in the church refer to the, this, this time we're in as the church age. After Jesus ascended, these last 2,000 years have been the church age. Isn't that interesting? We are in the church age right now, the spread of the church across the earth. And now we're, we're coming, it seems like, it feels like to the conclusion of that time as the gospel is spread through all these nations. And we're on the other side of the world from Jerusalem and we're, we're talking about Jesus. We're, we're preaching the gospel. Isn't that amazing? Now I understand you guys, it's not always easy to spread the gospel. In fact, today in our modern world, many don't believe in God at all, and they think they don't need God. But I, I, I think this recent crisis has shaken that in people a little bit. They think, well, I, I have all I need. I have food. I have, it, I have internet. I have a warm house. I don't need God. But then this, this crisis comes, and they realize, <clears throat> maybe I'm not really in control. Maybe just one thing can go wrong, a virus, a coronavirus, and pretty soon everything's out of whack. And maybe I'm not as in control as I thought I was. Isn't that interesting that it takes a crisis for us to realize that, hey, maybe I do need God. Maybe God does need to be the center of my world because I'm not in control. But the truth is many out there in, in this world prefer to ignore God and uh, we, we just want to live our own selfish ways, right? And we don't want to live for God. But we should consider what we're putting at risk if we're living that way. Because there is a real heaven and a real new heavens and new earth. But how often, <laughs> considering this reality that we can have our sins forgiven and be born again and be brought to salvation and eternal life, how often do we instead focus on silly pleasures and selfishness and sex and money and greed and power when we're offered with eternal joy with god in heaven uh, there's this old legend there's an old legend of a swan and a crane all right a swan and a crane a beautiful swan alighted by the banks of the water in which a crane was wading through the mud looking for snails For a few moments, the crane viewed the swan in wonder and then inquired, where do you come from, swan? I come from heaven, replied the swan. And where is heaven, asked the crane. Heaven, have you never heard of heaven? And the beautiful bird went on to describe the grandeur of the eternal city. She told of streets of gold and the gates and walls made of precious stones, of the river of life, pure as crystal. In eloquent terms, the swan was just describing this holy city. And finally, the crane asked, well, are there any snails there? Snails, replied the swan. No, of course not. Then, 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 then the crane replied, um, you can have your heaven. I want snails. And went back to digging in the mud. <laughs> Isn't that interesting? That this legend has a deep truth underlying it. How many a person to whom God has, has granted the advantages of, of a, a family who loves Jesus has turned his back upon and searched for snails? How many a man will sacrifice his wife, his family, his all for the snails of sin? All right. How many a girl has deliberately turned from the love of parents and home to learn too late that heaven has been forfeited for snails. And C.S. Lewis put it this way, C.S. Lewis in The Weight of Glory, he said, we are half-hearted creatures, fooling about with drink and sex and ambition where infinite joy is offered us. Like an ignorant child who wants to go on making mud pies in a slum because he cannot imagine what is meant by the offer of a holiday at the sea. We are far too easily pleased. Isn't that interesting? I, I really like that quote. This idea that we're, we're too satisfied with the, just the earthly pleasures and we should be wanting and yearning for greater things. And I think that's certainly true. But actually one of the main reasons that I came to God in my late 20s was because I had tried everything in life to find meaning. I had tried everything, drugs, alcohol, sex, pop culture, pop philosophy, new age uh, spirituality, college, friendships, um, everything to try to find ultimate meaning apart from God. And I, I, I did not want God, I will tell you that. 
And I, and I was left by all that, all that stuff, all that pleasure seeking, I was left completely empty. And I was broken, I was sad, I was a miserable rebel, exhausted by pleasure seeking. It was empty. And I got tired, you guys, I got tired of making mud pies in the dirt. And I decided I wanted to be something more. And I, I, I wanted to find ultimate truth. And I, I discovered to my, my amazement that ultimate truth is found in Jesus Christ. And uh, that, was, that was the last place I wanted to find it. I, I didn't want all these rules and guidelines, but I found great freedom in Christ instead. And now I'm a prince of his kingdom. I'm a co-heir with Christ. And that's for you too, okay? That, that's, that's what I'm telling you today is that gospel to be proclaimed to all nations is for you. It's for you today. And God is calling you to himself. That's why you're watching today. That's why you're seeing this message. That's why your, your mind is, for some reason, interested in hearing more. God is calling you to himself. Isn't that amazing? I think that's amazing that God loves us that much. He calls us to himself. And I'd like you to think about this quote from C.S. Lewis. If I find in myself a desire which no experience in this world can satisfy. And how often have we felt that way? Like we just long for something more. We, 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 we have the money, we have the nice car, we got the house, we got the, the wife, the, the husband, the kids, the good job. We long for something just more, so something beyond all this. And, and if you find in yourself a desire which no experience in this world can satisfy you, the most probable explanation is that you were made for another world. You were made for a world, the new heavens and new earth, where we will be living in the direct presence of God in, in just infinite beauty that we can't possibly imagine. You are made for another world. That's why this life so often feels miserable and empty. And that's why you ought to join the church, the living body of Christ on earth. And Jesus is calling the shots right now from heaven, speaking through his people, through you, through me, to call the world to himself before time runs out. And the truth is we all need a savior for our sins. And if we don't have that, we'll go to the place of darkness and evil forever. That is some scary stuff. But I don't say that to scare you, but to warn you. Both heaven and hell are real places, and we, we need to be aware of that. So put your faith in Jesus. Turn from your sins, they're empty anyway, and live for him. Because Jesus is coming again to rule and reign on this earth. You will see him with your own eyes, I guarantee it. He's real. And the hour is late right now. I really feel that, you guys, that the hour is late. Today is the day of salvation. We are in the end times. So turn to Jesus today. Say in your heart right now, cry out to Jesus, Jesus, be my Savior right now. You died for my sins on the cross, Jesus, and I live for you now. Thank you, Jesus. You are my Savior. I live in relationship with God today. God is my daddy, my father, and I love him, and he loves me. Yes, Jesus, you are our Savior. Declare it in your heart. Say it out loud right now from your home. Jesus Christ, you are my Savior. I cry out to you for salvation, to be saved, to be born again. And Jesus will be your Savior today. Join us on this journey. And, and uh, if you're feeling called, join the Salvation Army. Because... Uh, we are the soldiers of the body of Christ, and we are marching to a different drum, and we are fulfilling that great final command of Jesus to share the gospel to, with all nations and to teach the, the, those new disciples everything that Jesus taught us. So that, that is why we do that. That's why the, we're, we're the church. We're here to spread the word to the lost people of earth. And the truth is Jesus is coming again. This, this current world will not last forever. There's a new world coming. And Jesus it will be the king of, of that city, you guys. And he is perfect. He, he is my favorite savior ever. He is my only perfect savior. He's so amazing. You've got to know this Jesus guy, I tell you that much. He is the king of kings and lord of lords. And he is alive. He ascended. And he will come again. And I, I, I imagine on that day that his... His likeness will fill the whole sky. 
And I, I've heard people describe it as the whole sky is filled with Jesus. And it's like he's holding the earth like a little marble. That's how mighty our God is. That's how mighty Jesus Christ is. Okay, you guys. Sometimes we portray him like he's a, he's a weak kind of suffering, you know, uh, Mr. Rogers character, which nothing's wrong with Mr. Rogers, but Jesus is mighty. Jesus is the king of kings. Jesus is God almighty. He's the son of God. So um, I'm excited for that day. And I just want to call everyone to Jesus. Jesus ascended and he is coming again. Would you guys pray with me? I, I, I just want to pray uh, about this current crisis we're in. And I want to pray that just this whole community would come to Jesus. Uh, the, the general of the Salvation Army has called us to prayer. So please pray with me right now. Heavenly Father, we cry out to you. We throw ourselves at your mercy, God, and we ask, God, that you would resolve this current crisis. God, please have mercy on those who are struggling financially right now, God. Please have mercy on those who are, who are fighting because they're caught in such close quarters for so long. Please, please God, have mercy on those children right now who are, who are uh, stuck at home, who've who can't play sports, who can't go to school anymore. God, have mercy on them. God, we pray for those who are suffering and sick right now because of the virus, God. Please, God, have mercy on them. Lord, please, please, God, bring healing and hope to your people right now. Please, God, move us past this in strength. But God, please, please, please help the people of this community to see their need for Jesus, to be humbled and to turn to Jesus Christ. For salvation, God. We trust you for this. We hope for you in this. We have faith for you, God, in this. In the name of Jesus Christ, it is done. Amen. Thank you, everyone, for joining us today. Please continue to pray, and God be with you.